Now let's go into some examples of tests, um, the things that uh, you guys are going to be more familiar with. And so I'm going to talk about safer tests, which is uh, the ASPCA's uh, test that they typically are using uh, that was developed by Dr. Emily Weiss. Um, she's got seven different subtests within her assessment. Uh, they're set up, uh, as the name implies, to be a relatively safe way to perform the test. Um, we start with lower arousal stimuli and then work our way up to more uh, provocative stimuli for the dog. Um, it's actually set up uh, to, at this point, to be one of the more, uh, more standardized tests available. She's very particular about how the person who's performing the test body language is, what type of equipment they're using to perform the test, how the room is set up, um, having a very detailed score sheet that walks you through how to do it. And she's actually set up a situation where uh, people can go through training in these testing uh, protocols and be certified that they're actually performing the test in the manner that she had designed it. Um, so at this point, you know, this is the type of thing that we need to see to be on the right track for that standardization. Uh, one of the tests, the first, it starts out with a look test, and so essentially uh, you're taking the dog's head in your hands and you're looking into their eyes using a soft eye contact, trying to determine uh, how comfortable they are with eye contact. Uh, whether or not um, they're threatened by this or if they may potentially show aggression. Uh, then they move on to the sensitivity test, which is essentially looking at uh, physical sensitivity. Uh, well, the dog is in front of you and you'll take a firm kneading motion of the skin down the body and then down the leg and then back up again and do that three times. Again, looking at the reaction of the dog. Uh, is it turning around and whirling and growling at you or is it pulling away because it's afraid of the stimulus or is it enjoying the <coughs> physical contact? Then we go into the tag test. Um, this is looking at play and arousal level. And so we actually try to engage the dog in play. Um, and she's very particular about the excited voice and the play movement. And then you touch the dog with your finger and go pow and try to get the dog to interact with you as you're running away. And again, leash contact and how loose and tight your leash are and things like that are very specific uh, in the protocol for this. Um, the squeeze test, uh, this is where we're looking at uh, anticipation of a potentially uh, undesirable physical contact. So the assessor says squeeze, runs her hand down the leg of the dog, and then squeezes in between the toes. So we're setting the dog up that squeeze equals this is what's going to happen. Then they repeat that and see how the dog responds, anticipating that that same uh, physical contact is going to happen again. Then we look at food behavior. And uh, we give the dog a really great mix of canned and dry food. We allow it to start eating. Dog's obviously on leash. Um, and then they take a assess a hand, which is essentially a plastic hand on a stick, so it gives you a little extra reach so you're not sticking your own hand in the food bowl there. And uh, say, I'm going to take it away, and you pull the food away, and you see what the response is. And you may pet over the back or push its head out. And again, she's got it very clearly specified in the protocol on um, which you do first. Do you talk to the dog? Do you pull it away? Do you push the head to the right, to the left, stroke the dog down the back? Um, and in what order you do that? Then you look at toy behavior. So you give the dog a variety of toys, try to initiate it in play, and then again, try to take that toy away. In a similar situation that an owner would do. You say, give me that, use the hand and pull it away. She also specifies in there you can use a rawhide to do the same type of thing. But again, she's very specific on exactly what type of rawhide material is going to be used for the test. Um, and then at that point, we look at dog-to-dog uh, -dog behavior. And so we try to uh, evaluate how that dog is going to respond to an unfamiliar, stable dog or non-reactive dog. And she actually grades the first 10 seconds of visual contact between the two dogs. So as soon as the dog sees the other dog um, as it's walking into a room, that's what the dog is graded on. Dogs physically have contact with each other. Obviously, that's a safety issue. And so we're going to look at a quick video clip of a couple pieces of the safer test, and then we'll go through one more uh, commonly used uh, test situation. So we're going to look at the squeeze test, and that's the one where the person was running their hand down uh, the dog's foot. dog didn't care too much about having his foot handled. And then we'll look at how they set up the food behavior test.
you notice in that video, the dog's leash was loose at all times. There was never any tension on the leash. And she was very specific about what she said and which way she pushed the dog's head and how much time she gave the dog to begin eating again uh, before um, trying to take it away. So now look, let's look at uh, the other uh, very commonly used test um, that's being used in shelters across uh, the nation right now. And it's actually, there's lots of different permutations of this test floating around uh, because the initial one um, is rather long and rather complicated and it's not exactly user friendly for most shelter situations because I think it takes like an hour and a half to perform the entire test. And of course, time and money is of an essence um, in the shelter situation. So the, the assess a pet, Sue Sertenberg's assess a pet, uh, is the other big model uh, for a lot of uh, shelter assessment tests. And so Kelly Bolin uh, out at Cornell kind of modified this down to the more important parts that she found that tended to be more valid and uh, looked at a uh, population of shelter dogs uh, with these. And this is her uh, test that she's uh, come up with. So there's nine different step tests, and a lot of it's going to be similar um, to what you saw with the safe room. There's going to be some other things that are uh, importantly different between the two tests. So the first thing is cage presentation. We didn't have cage presentation with the safer test. And so this gives us an opportunity to look at barrier frustration, potential territorial aggression, things like that. And so um, the evaluator will go up to the dog in the kennel, walk up to it, look at it for five seconds, um, and then turn down to a less threatening body posture, ignore it, and then begin to talk to the dog. And again, spelled out very clearly, how many seconds are we looking at the dog? How many seconds are we turned to the side? When do we start talking to the dog? And I'll show you a couple video clips of different responses you may see uh, with this test itself. And then she moves on to sociability. The sociability for this one's a little different uh, than what we saw with the safer. And so this one, the dog's actually taken out of the kennel into the evaluation room on leash. And the evaluator just stands there and holds on to leash for 30 seconds. And we see whether the dog goes out of its way to initiate contact with the handler. And then the person will start to speak and, and touch the dog and stroke it down the back to see how it responds. <coughs> then they'll do the teeth examination. So this is kind of uh, correlating with um, the sensitivity test where they were handling the dog down the side. And so they'll actually take the dog's lips and lift it up to show the teeth and do this five times in a row holding to see how much struggle there is, whether the dog's amenable to it or if it pulls its head away or if it growls, things like that. And then they'll look at handling. They go a little more in depth with handling than the safer does. So they'll stroke the dog down the back. They'll pick up a back leg. Uh, they'll touch the tail, maybe even get a, a gentle tug. They'll handle both ears, look inside them. Uh, wipe the body down with a towel. So oftentimes, as I've learned being in the behavior clinic, this can be a real trigger for a lot of animals. They're fine with the bath, but then you try to dry them off and they start to show aggression. They may apply pressure to the shoulders, so push down on the dog, and then give the dog a hug. And again, safety is an issue here, so if we're evaluating potentially aggressive dogs, we have to have a safe way to try to hug a dog. And so again, she's very specific on how you go about putting this dog into a gentle restraining hug and then how to get away from the animal in a safe manner. Then they do look at arousal level. Um, so again, they engage the dog in play. It's a little less specified as, than the tag test with safer. And then we try to determine the play style, the arousal level, and how long it takes the dog to calm down afterwards. They also look at food bowl, very similar setup. I think the safer assessment for the food bowl was actually taken from Sue Sternberg's assessor pet, so exactly the same type of protocol. Uh, she does look at uh, possessions as well, so we look at a variety of different toys, try to find something the dog's interested in. And then she'll also add in a rawhide, but rather than having a standardized piece of unbasted knotted rawhide, which is what the safer test calls for, they actually talk about a um, the really the best piece of rawhide you could possibly find, so the bacon basted uh, figure or something like that. Then they'll look at strangers, and again, a major portion that was not present in the safer test. They'll have a person dressed in a coat and a hat um, knock on a door, and then the handler who's sitting in a chair says, who's there? Come in. And the person walks in very briskly, uh, stands there and stares at the dog, and then reaches out and takes two more steps towards the dog, and that's obviously a very threatening behavior to a dog. See how the dog responds, and then they turn down and greet the dog in a friendly manner. And then again, the dog introduction. Um, she will actually let score a little longer than the safer does, and sometimes the dogs may be able to actually contact each other. But again, major safety issues included with that. And we'll finish up here with a couple of video clips 
um, of the different portions of the accessipad. So we'll start with the uh, CAGE presentation. I'm going to show you two different responses to the same CAGE presentation. These are actually courtesy of Dr. Brian DeGange in uh, University of Florida. He actually worked with Kelly Bowen with her uh, research. So you can see this dog is obviously very motivated to interact with him, showing lots of friendly, lots of appeasement behavior, licking, jumping, wagging the tail, things like that. And it actually gets a little frustrated because she's got that barrier in between her and him. She's actually starting to bite at the chain link uh, of the kennel. And then we'll look at this dog here, who's going to show you a very different response to the same test. And watch as he leaves. See the dog freeze, the hard stare? And he charges him as he starts to turn his back. I mean, that's a very, very different response than what we got the first time. And then we're going to look at handling. And again, same type of thing. He's going to be using the towel and pushing down on the shoulders. Obviously, this dog's not too concerned. Tug slightly on the collar. So that dog was actually pretty motivated to go in the direction he was tugging, so he actually drugged the handler after he started in a direction. Okay. And so those are two very commonly used test uh, examples uh, that people are either using that in and of itself or they're making their own versions of this. Obviously, if we're making our own versions of this, that decreases our standardization and potential for uh, valid testing.